What's up, everybody? I'm Stan, and welcome to Detail Comics, where we go over comics in detail. This is the weekly one-shot, and I'm going to be talking about The Vulture. With the recent dropping of the Spider-Man Homecoming movie trailer, The Vulture has been a more important villain in Spider-Man's history than any time before. And that's saying something, because The Vulture, Adrian Toomes, actually made his debut in Amazing Spider-Man number 2, making him one of the oldest villains that Spider-Man's ever faced, both literally and in his history of canon. When he was originally introduced in Amazing Spider-Man number 2, there wasn't really a whole lot known about him other than the fact that he was out there looking to steal things and gain for himself. But ultimately, Peter Parker defeats the Vulture by disabling an electromagnetic harness that was enabling him to fly. And the wings were primarily simply for, I don't know, defensive purposes as well as, you know, being able to maneuver inside the air, taking advantage of updrafts and currents, and really giving him the ability to fly, while the belt gave him the ability to levitate. When we next see the Vulture, he's in the hospital prison, and ultimately he's on his deathbed so he entrusts the secret of his last pair of vulture wings to his cellmate Blackie Drago, who was evidently just buddying up to Adrian Toomes for that information so that that way he could have them for himself. So as Blackie Drago escapes, he basically takes on the mantle of the vulture until he's spoiled by Spider-Man and ends up in prison again. Even though most people assume that Adrian Toomes as the vulture was dead, he made his resurgence and ultimately made his way back into the comic books, appearing in several other issues between 1963 with his introduction and later on in the late 80s. And it's one of the situations where we didn't actually get a specific origin for Adrian Toomes' version of the Vulture until Amazing Spider-Man 240 and 241. At this point in time, we see that the Vulture is living in a retirement community where nobody's really going to suspect him because he blends in with all the other old people, but he finds out that Gregory Bestman, his former business partner, is opening up his own electronics store. So he goes over to this expo, breaks down all of Gregory Bestman's stuff, and kidnaps the man, and Spider-Man just happens to be in the area. So they take off, they travel across the water, headed towards Staten Island, where Spider-Man finds the Vulture's lair and starts breaking things down. But not before we have the ability to kind of capture what the history between Gregory Bestman and Adrian Toomes is. Originally, they were business partners opening up a store and becoming a company called Bestman and Toomes Electronics, B&T Electronics. Adrian Toomes was really the brains behind the operation, which is how he developed the actual electromagnetic suit and harness that allowed him to fly and levitate. So after he found out that his business partner was essentially embezzling all the profits of the business, he lifts him up and presses him up against the wall, and for a geriatric individual, this is a pretty impressive feat, and he finds out that the fields that are being generated by his suit give him superhuman-style strength, basically enhanced human strength, lifting up to about 700 pounds or so. So, between the capabilities of flight, which he kind of enhances with the actual wings themselves, and the superhuman strength that they possess, that is really the origin of the Vulture. So while Spider-Man takes him down as part of that story, he continues to live on throughout the Spider-Man legacy, appearing later and being able to suck the life out of Spider-Man on occasions, but the important thing that we need to remember is that Adrian Toomes' Vulture is one of the oldest and most prominent villains in Spider-Man's history. He was one of the originators. He was one of the founding members of the Sinister Six. So that gives him legacy. It gives him prominence throughout the history of Spider-Man. Unfortunately, we haven't seen much of him recently, with his last appearance being in Superior Spider-Man 13 when he was trying to escape from the Raft prison, and then ultimately in Superior Spider-Man Team-Up, where he was a part of the Superior Six, which was a mind-controlled group of villains that Dr. Octavius' version of Spider-Man kind of sent out on missions to do good. However, we're not going to stop at Adrian Toomes' version of the Vulture. We're going to go into the Ultimate Vulture, and I'll show you why in a second. In The Ultimate Spider-Man, a series written by Brian Michael Bendis and set in much more modern times, we actually see that the Vulture is Blackie Drago again. And Adrian Toomes is a scientist that's associated with the Venom Project, but that's a different story because Blackie Drago takes on the mantle of the Vulture as an originator. And instead of being an ex-con kind of situation, he was actually an ex-Shield agent, making sure that he's a highly trained military person. He was born in about 1971, so that put him in about his 40s at this point in time. So what he does is he gets a suit with a power pack, and he's basically contracted to kill the... CEO president of Roxxon Corporation. And that's how he meets his encounter with Spider-Man and ultimately gets foiled as a part of that. This version of Blackie Drago as the Vulture actually debuted in Ultimate Spider-Man issue number 89. So we saw a much more technologically based Vulture as well as a little bit more armor. He was using grenades and things like that as he was carrying out this kind of assassination contract. But the most important thing about the Ultimate Universe and its relationship is that this wasn't provided to him by himself. He didn't, he didn't create this Vulture suit. It was created 
by the Tinkerer. And this becomes more and more important as we get closer to Spider-Man Homecoming and my theories on the Vulture and how he's going to be in that universe. Essentially, when Blackie Drago is captured, he leads S.H.I.E.L.D. back to the Tinkerer, and the Tinkerer gets contracted, or basically inscripted, into providing gadgetry and doing development for S.H.I.E.L.D. himself. And as we know, the Ultimate Universe has carried a lot of weight and a lot of influence on the MCU. If you just take a look at Sam Jackson as Nick Fury, the look of Thor throughout the movies, and a bunch of different other things, it really has a heavy influence from the Ultimate Universe. And that becomes much more important, because as Blackie Drago evolved through the Ultimate Universe, he had much smaller role than he would have had in the standard Amazing Spider-Man, the Earth-616 universe, but he does become a part of the Ultimate Six and plays a pretty key role in the death of Spider-Man, you know, the death of Peter Parker, which is one of the best old deaths in the history of comics. Why does Ultimate Spider-Man and Ultimate Vulture matter so much? That's because Spider-Man Homecoming and the Michael Keaton version of the Vulture is going to lean heavily on this Ultimate Universe version of the character. So when we break down this amazing Spider-Man Homecoming trailer, we see a bunch of different things. So first things first, one of the big reasons that I feel like Ultimate Spider-Man is going to be impacting the way that Spider-Man Homecoming is going to be portrayed can be seen in Ultimate Spider-Man number 42, which is actually mirrored almost perfectly in the Spider-Man Homecoming trailer. In that scene, essentially, a group of masked banditos that are dressed up like the Avengers go in to try and rob a place and Spider-Man stops them. And you can see that actually happen inside the Spider-Man Homecoming trailer. We also have Ultimate Spider-Man issue number 155, where Tony Stark gifts an upgraded set of web shooters to Peter Parker, which has already been seen in Civil War as well. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's break down the Spider-Man Homecoming Vulture and how he's going to relate to both the Adrian Toomes character and the Blackie Drago character, and a mix of both of those universes. So first things first, we have Michael Keaton and his age. It's much closer to Adrian Toomes than it would be to Blackie Drago at this point in time, and the look is kind of consistent across both of them. Blackie Drago was designed to be a little bit more Jason Stratham-esque, but it's going to be kind of cool to see Michael Keaton take on this role and really kind of add his own situation to this. When we take a look at the actual Vulture armor as he drops into the solarium, essentially we see a much more inspired but rudimentary kind of style compared to say like Falcon suit where we've got the rotating blades that's going to allow him to hover in place a little bit more VTOL style stuff and this is going to be pretty interesting because it's definitely not the handiwork of S.H.I.E.L.D. or at least it doesn't look like it unless it's some sort of stolen military tech and I mean maybe an ex-S.H.I.E.L.D. agent could do that but well, yeah we'll get to that in a second so uh, as we kind of take a look at that, we also get the close-up of the Vulture's actual helmet and this kind of furry bomber jacket. And those really imply a little bit more military style as well. The inspiration from the fighter jet helmet, which is going to allow him to fly at altitude, you know, carry oxygen, those kind of things. It's definitely a necessity, plus the heads-up display that's going to allow him to monitor his suit is got to be a key point in this. You know, if Iron Man needs a heads-up display to monitor the Iron Man armor, and Falcon needs some sort of display in order to monitor the Falcon suit, the Vulture is definitely going to have to have something like that going on as well. Then we also see in a close-up, you can see a little bit more exoskeleton-style nature to the Vulture armor and suit that is only enhanced by those actual mechanical claws as he's going to be kind of crashing down and latching onto different ledges and things like that. So this is a very tech-heavy influence suit. And when you take in the account that the Tinkerer has already been established as a character in the Spider-Man Homecoming movie, and he's already been cast in that, and I think that we see him with Donald Glover kind of firing off that uh, rudimentary Iron Man hand cannon, this is going to be another tie to that Ultimate Universe. So if we're looking at things, we're going to see probably an Adrian Toomes character in name, but we're going to get more of the backstory of Blackie Drago. So he's going to probably be a little bit more militaristic, probably former Air Force, some other kind of person that was maybe trying to make a name for himself, establish himself outside the fact, and then ultimately had to turn to a, a vengeful kind of nature because... Michael Keaton's portrayal seems a little bit more violent, a little bit more visceral, a little bit more on edge than what you'd expect out of Adrian Toomes as a character himself. So that's the origin and history of one of Spider-Man's oldest villains, but I want to know what you guys think and see if there's any kind of prominent stories that you guys really like about the Vulture, so hit me up in the comments down below and we can start that conversation. As always, if you like what you see, hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe right there to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.